this video, I would like to explain what you should consider when you do winter camping in a van to have the most exciting travel experience ever. First of all, you should ask yourself what do you expect from your travels in the van and what are the requirements? So what brings the van naturally and where do you have to pay attention to? In times of pandemic, this is probably the best solution to combine your winter vacation with your accommodation van. Because living in a van, it's not just about mobility, it's also about accommodation. So check it out, comment below and please don't forget to subscribe to REV if you would like to see more stuff like this on REV. It's no surprise that van camping trips are cool again. Besides the independence and flexibility, you can rent out camper vans for a reasonable price these days. But watch out, fines for wild camping can be pretty high in some countries. I'm heading off into the Harz Mountains in central Germany. It's December and the van is fitted with good heating and the right tires. But what about four-wheel drive? It's a pretty important consideration as I found out on this country lane. <laughs> oh, <f> <laughs> ah, f this is such a f so be aware, your camper van may be a jack of all trades, but that doesn't make it an off-roader. I was gonna explore the hearts and now... I'm so worried to do a mistake. It's probably a good idea to put the wood underneath so the car and the tire gets gripped. I actually brought snow chains and now I get stuck in the mud. <laughs> We were saved by the rubber foot mats. I'd love to show you the moment of victory, but my cameraman and I were too busy pushing. It just needs to be cleaned now. As you may have noticed, I'm not a survivalist, so I've opted for a well-equipped German campsite with creature comforts such as heated sanitary facilities and drying rooms and even a sauna. My home is a converted 2020 T6 Volkswagen. The pop-up roof reveals a double bed that sleeps four. The refit raises the cost of the van from about 50 to 75,000 euros. So what else do I get? A lot of sockets and charging options. A thermostat controlled parking heater which doubles as a ceramic stove for cooking. Easy access electrics and fun to use touch LEDs and ambient lighting. The kitchen area is practical and compact and there's a handy drawer under the back seat for essentials including a space heater. At the back end there are more storage options and did I mention running water? I'm starting to feel cozy already. Though with two people in the bottom and two more in the roof, you'd have to be really good friends. Speaking of the roof, the solar panel gives you a good battery boost, though in winter you will still need mains power. I already put up the roof, so I have a little bit of space in here. You know, I already put the table on, so I can actually turn it that way and, you know, do something with it. And now I have some essentials. I would totally put in my van if I go on a trip like this. I imagine the van could get pretty messy with two or even more people's stuff to store. All this has made me so hungry. It's the first time that I'm using it, so I, <laughs> I hope it really works. Oh, it's already on temperature, that's cool. My stomach demands some canned veggies. While the van gets its energy from the main supply, I draw mine from the hot food. I call that synergy. Now, I just need a hot tea to make the winter magic complete. <laughs> I can't believe it's like freezing outside and I'm here in my van. It's time for bed. But this is quite challenging, it's a little bit of Tetris. With both hands, you touch down here and pull it, and then you pull it and bend it over. And then, this is the second part of the bed, and you just pull it down. There's my bed sheets and everything in there, so I'm just gonna, you know, organize that again. 
Sleeping bag or blankets or both? Oh my God, it's so comfy. I love it. Oh guys, and don't forget to close the window blinds so no one can get a hold of you. Good night world. While everyone else is still sleeping, I make the most of the morning hour. Really nice and warm. Now I understand why underfloor heating exists. I don't even have that at home. What a way to wake up. Fresh coffee in bed and insulating curtains to keep in the warmth. And now I have to organize everything again. Because in my fridge, there's the milk. Fridge is bigger than it looks. You can get to it easily if you don't pile stuff on it like I do. It's nice to be able to wash the dishes in the van. Because there's only a 15 liter water tank, you have to really take care of what you, what you do with your water. Some things you can't do in the van. Everything you usually do in your apartment, I just have a little walk there. The day is young and I want to explore the region. It's time to release the van from its shackles. Here we are. And here you see the electricity. And now I have to unplug it because it was plugged in overnight, obviously. To make sure the water I've already used doesn't freeze in the van, I empty it at the special point provided at the campsite. You really need power to open this. And I've had it open before, but now it just won't, doesn't work. Oh, here we go. Ah. So, drain pipe flowing. And you just wait until it's done. And now for the coolest thing about van camping, taking my kitchen for a ride. The T6 handles really well, which is a good thing in this weather. 20 meters view, that's it. In such atmospheric weather, it's easy to find some impressive locations. Whoa, nice. This is so mystical, but unfortunately no photo can capture that. I love being independent and free to drive where I want, of course with respect for animals and the environment. I actually wanted to take this way because it looks super nice, but unfortunately it's not allowed because it's a special area for people and animals. So I have to find another spot. A van like this Volkswagen T6 lets me feel closer to nature at any time of year. But 75,000 euros is a lot of money and right now I'd rather rent than buy. Or go for less luxury. In any case, van camping seems to me one of the best ways of traveling. Next time maybe I'll head south where it's warmer. For now, a campfire will do just fine. I would be very happy if you would leave me some comments and remarks and subscribe to Rev if you would like to see more content like this. This is Julia Doni for Rev. Stay tuned, healthy and see you soon.